Good morning. Once again, we have a loaded house. Wow. I wish it would stop raining or snowing. So, well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we are able to uh, celebrate Lord, our Lord. All right. Um, just a couple things to highlight. The Altar Flower Sponsorship, uh, we need your sponsorship. So if you're able to, please join us in doing so. Um, Next weekend is our annual um, congregation meeting, so that'll be at the, after the late service. There'll be a, uh, some, a, a, a lunch, so join us for that. And then we, um, we have, once again, our Bible study tomorrow night. We're going to talk about the three religions, um, you know, of uh, the three biggest religions in the world, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Tomorrow night, at, but we're meeting at 6, okay? 6 o'clock, just because there's so much... To cover. So I know it sounds a little confusing, but it's at 6, even though it says 6.30 there. Yeah, it says this week Bible study is at 6. All right. And then that's about it. The rest are in your bulletin. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds as we worship our Lord. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, Word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but you have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant and renew your generation. <laughs> renew us that we might proclaim the good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
be reading from the prophet Jonah, beginning at the third chapter, the first verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that gem city, and proclaim that the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel reading is from the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, starting at verse 14. Now after John was arrested... Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we're grateful on this uh, cool morning, cold morning, snowy morning, that we're able still to come into your holy house and to worship you like we do every week. We ask you now, again, to restore us to you, mold us according to your will, and let the words that are spoken have the power to transform and renew us so that we are able to live according to your will, proclaim your good news to those who are lost, and to be a symbol of your presence in this world. In your name we pray, amen. So, this is quite an amazing text, I thought. Um, This is a story of Jesus starting his ministry. He's going out and he's collecting his uh, followers. And the amazing thing is that these guys, they're young. They're like, they're in their their teenagers, you know? And... um, they are in various uh, places around the Sea of Galilee. Then most of them are in the family businesses. Uh, You know, Andrew and John and James and uh, Philip, they're all doing things that their family expects them to do to continue on the family heritage. And in those days, any big decisions you made, you had to go to the patriarch of the family, which is, you know, their father or grandfather, And they had to get permission from their patriarch if they were going to change their minds, if they were going to do something drastically different with their lives, like move out of town, get married, or buy a new house even, or go and have a different career, leave the family business. But So just imagine the amazing audacity of these um, young guys who up and leave the family business, which is fishing, and go and follow this stranger for all you know, intents and purposes. For everything they know about Jesus, it's very minimal. They've heard rumors about him, but they really don't know him, and they up and leave. And they don't just go say, you know, give me a moment. Let me go talk to the patriarch. They, don't do it. they just leave. They leave. There's a, later down in the Gospels, Jesus said, you know, let, 
you know, Jesus, uh, somebody says, can I follow you? And, and Jesus, yeah, come follow me. He said, well, first, let me go bury the dead. Do you remember that text? And, um, and Jesus says, no, you don't have time. You've got to go now. The thing about the Gospel of Mark is that it's all, one of the biggest themes of the Gospel of Mark is the idea of immediacy. Everything has to happen now. If you read from the beginning, when Jesus is baptized, the heavens is ripped open and now comes the dove. The presence of God is here in the here and now. And, 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 and if you look at your gospel reading today, there's at least two instances in which the word immediate is in there. It's everything has to happen now. And so Mark tells the story of these disciples not w thinking twice about what they're, they're, they're doing it now. They're leaving their business. They're going to uh, follow Jesus. They don't wait. They don't wait until after the workday is over. They don't wait to go talk to the patriarch. They up and leave. They swim out of the water and they go and follow Jesus. For Mark, it's all in the here and now. And so, in a way, it's following a greater theme of the Old Testament. The Old Testament, if you remember, is continually about God saying, repent, repent, repent. And the people rarely, often, repent right on cue, except in the story of Jonah. Jonah goes to him, this massive city. I, mean, I don't think it'll take us 12 hours to walk across this city. I'm not even sure it'll take us six hours to walk across this city, right? So imagine three days. That's 72 hours of walking, okay? Even, a, I mean, I don't, I, can't, I don't know if it'll take you three days to walk across New York City, if you could, but just imagine that. So, so anyway, he, um, he proclaims, and these people immediately, the king says, we're doing it. We're going to repent, The point of today's uh, texts, but really the point of, of the Gospel of Mark, and really a lot of the, God, uh, the Bible, even if you look at John the Baptist, it's about coming to terms with Christ now. There is no time to lose. Wherever we are in our lives, however wrong we might be, however perfect we have been, wherever we are, we're always called to make ourselves, our road straight with Christ, with God to always be checking in on God. And it's, we can't wait until later after we've talked to our patriarch or after the workday. God is always calling us now, wanting to embrace us now, engaging with us now, in the here and now. There is no yesterday, there is no tomorrow. God sees us as we are now. He is engaged with us in the immediate moment, in this time, now. And what's important about that is that it's freeing in a way that our mistakes of the past or whatever we've done doesn't hold us back in our relationship with God. Neither will our future potential or possibilities. God sees us in the here and now, but God wants us in the here and now. He wants us now. And so what Mark constantly is always portraying is where are you now with Christ? It is all now. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. And so you've got to be about now. And so today's gospel text, that the beginning of the ministry of Christ, Christ is in a way telling his disciples, if you're going to follow me, this is the chance now. Because later there may not be. As we learn three years later, Jesus, his ministry doesn't last long. I've lasted, what, 10 times almost longer than Jesus' ministry, right? And, um, and so for, for in terms of a lifetime, three years is not long. So there is no tomorrow. Everything with God is about the here and now, the very here and now. And in a way, that's how we relate to one another. When people need us, they need us now. We can't wait later. When there's a car accident, we have to react now. And when it comes to ministry, it is often about now. I find it fascinating in my years of ministry how often will people will be invited to ministry, but they'll say, oh, let me talk to my husband, let me talk to my wife, let me check my calendar, let me... But ministry can't wait for that. It's always about now. And what I, you know, the old saying is that the busier you are, the more likely you have time to do things. It's because those people somehow understand that ministry has to be done now. And so when Christ comes calling, whether it's for us to do something or for us to be closer to him, it's always in the here and now. 
You know, to, uh, next week we have the congregation meeting, and we begin to basically uh, a new, new year of ministry. We have people on council, but we, we need people also on uh, various committees. And we need all of us now to make this congregation a viable congregation. And when we say yes to now, we say yes to Christ. And when we engage with Christ, we are open to the possibilities of Christ working through us in the here and now. That is allowing others to see his presence also. So I pray and I ask that you consider your place in our next year of ministry here. But also, where are you with Christ? And where are you with your neighbor? Because our neighbors need us always in the here and now. I had a friend the other day call me and tell me about his, um, his car accident. And he was telling me how the neighbors, not his neighbors, but people from out of the house saw the car accident and came all rushing out to help him. They were all there, way there, long before the ambulance or the police got there. It was an amazing story of neighborliness, people not waiting until something happens. I mean, not waiting for them to have time. They just rushed out and did what they could. Sadly, it always takes an emergency, but oftentimes ministry doesn't require an emergency. It requires us to be present with one another. And so let us be that way. In this year, let us pray. Dear Lord, we're grateful that you continue to love us. You continue to call us. Help us, Lord, to see the immediacy of your need, the immediacy of ministry, the immediacy of those who are lost in this world and need your saving word. Help us, Lord, to continually find ways to proclaim your good news, your love, your grace in this world that is often lost and dwelling in darkness. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ <coughs> embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, Hear our prayer. God, who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your, in your way of justice and truth. God of grace, Excuse me. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us in this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we are strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us, God of strength. Accompany those who are hurting, shelter our unhoused neighbors in any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and suffering, those on our prayer list, and those we now name. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care, especially Margaret Walsh, Preston Rhodes, Edith Vogt, Gertrude Tevis, Oliver Shadow Jr., and Francis Pomeroy. Praise to you for the eternal life they have been given through Jesus Christ. God of grace, prayer. we pray for peace in the world, especially in war-torn areas, and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hand through suffering in order to, uh, to free the, from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you, he said, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this is my blood poured out for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. We ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church, gather into one all who share this bread and wine, fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite all baptized Christians to join us at the Lord's Supper. You may be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remains with you always. Amen. Amen.